What's up everyone? Today, as you can see up here, we have the present perfect indicative. And uh, this is gonna be sort of our first introduction to a whole host of different perfect tenses. And so the present perfect indicative is sort of the natural starting point when understanding uh, perfect tenses. And so there's a, a wide range of perfect tenses and uh, they range from, well, this one, the present perfect indicative. You have the past perfect indicative. You have the present perfect subjunctive. You have the past perfect subjunctive. You have the future perfect and the conditional perfect. And so as you can see, there's a whole host of different perfect tenses to be learned. But today, uh, as I said, we're going to look at the present perfect indicative and then we'll build from there. But uh, most importantly, with this being the first introduction, there's a number of things I want to walk through uh, above and beyond just showing you the present perfect indicative and its conjugations. And so what I mean by that is uh, all perfect tenses, uh, whether it's this one uh, with the present perfect indicative or the other ones I've mentioned, they are all going to use the verb, the verb haber as a helping verb. And so that actually means to have, right? And I know some of you are like, yeah, but I thought tener meant to have, and it does. It's not like that went away, but uh, the helping verb for the perfect tenses uses the verb haber, which also means to have. It's a synonym, if you will. And so um, while tener does still exist, uh, haber is the verb, the helping verb, or in some cases you'll hear it as the auxiliary verb um, that, that's used uh, alongside the past participle, which we'll get to as well, uh, and that will form uh, the structure for all perfect tenses. And so in the case of the present perfect indicative, it's have. So have, I have studied, for example, that's the use of the present perfect. So have studied being a combination of the helping verb with the past participle, studied being the past participle. Right, and so uh, we're gonna walk through that. Uh, I'm gonna, of course, show you the conjugations of the verb haber for the present perfect indicative, which are, as you can see here, the present tense, or the present indicative conjugations of the verb haber. And then uh, I also, we're gonna walk through some past participles. I'll show you how to form a past participle. And then I have here under ejemplos, as you can see, just some examples of past participles. Now. This is showing you how to do regular past participles, right? Um, I will put a little asterisk here because these are gonna take an accent over the I, um, but that doesn't make them irregular. Um, there are irregular past participles and we will cover those in a different lesson, right? And, uh, so uh, most importantly, I want you to understand the structure, which is haber is a helping verb, conjugated, of course, to agree with the subject, and then the past participle. And so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with ave, and I'm gonna look at the conjugations. Then I'm gonna show you how to create past participles. And then we're gonna sort of bring it to a close by looking at translations, right? We're gonna use uh, the present perfect indicative in these sentences. And um, as you can see here, we have have drunk, have read, have eaten, so so on and so forth. So we're gonna look at how these work in a sentence to make actual sentences using the present perfect indicative. And so, uh, as I said, haber is the helping verb or the auxiliary verb, which means it is used with every single perfect tense. So for example, uh, we have the present perfect indicative here, but if we were learning the future perfect, which we will eventually, it would be haber in the future tense plus the past participles. And so um, these are how we do past participles and I'll explain that in a second. But um, I also want you to know that with, in terms of the past participles, they will all end with the letter O, irrespective of number and gender. And I'll get to that uh, in a second as well. But I wanna bring you back here and show you all the conjugations of haber in the present indicative. And so, because that's what we're focusing on today. And so, uh, these are, as I said, haber in, the pre it's a, haber in the present tense. And so, it's 
I have, you have, he, she, it has, we have, you all uh, have, and they, um, they have, right? And so that's how that's translated. But let's let's take a look at it in Spanish. So we have a, as, a, hemos, habéis, an, right? And I'll do that again for you guys. A, as, a, hemos, habéis, an, right? And so those are the conjugations of haber, for the present indicative. And again, it's the helping or auxiliary verb. So this verb will be used across all the other um, perfect tenses. And so, but for this, it's in the present indicative tense. And so hopefully that makes sense. Um, and um, yeah, and so that that is what it is. And that uh, just, to, just to sort of reiterate a little bit, we have, I have, you have, he, she, or it has, or usted, right, formal. Um, and so this would be yo, tu, usted, el, ella, of course. Nosotros, vosotros, ustedes, ellos, ellas. And again, the English would be I have, you have, he, she, or it has, or you formal, uh, right? And then uh, we have, you all have, right? Um, and so that's vosotros. And then they uh, have. And so again, that's the English, but notice the Spanish is obviously has each individual one has its own separate conjugation, which is a really amazing thing because you don't actually need the subject pronoun with uh, most of these. Now, if, it's, if there's any level of ambiguity and you need to clarify, of course, you wanna use the subject pronoun. But for example, I know it's I have if I say a, I don't have to say yo a, because I already know based on this um, conjugation. And so we'll, we'll look at that a, a bit in bit, a bit more detail when we get down here, but I wanna move over to the past participles so that I can help you guys understand that a bit more. And then we'll pair them together down here with these sentences. And so, like I said, with the past participles, they will all end with the letter O, irrespective of number and gender. And again, I'll make sense of that down here as well, but I just wanted to put that out there. And so how do we make a past participle, right? And so I have here like sort of nicknaming it, if you will, the ados and the idos, right? I don't, uh, I don't know if we would call it a nickname, but I'm putting it up there so you kind of see it as we talk about it. And, uh, and so the question is, how do we create a past participle? And uh, for example, in English, I would say, I have studied for five hours. Well, the past participle in that is study. So where did that come from, right? And let's look at that in Spanish. To do it in Spanish, we would drop the A-R-E-R-I-R, -R -R, which ends, as you can see, all these, uh, those are the three types of verbs in Spanish. So um, you would drop that off the back of the verb, the A-R-E-R-I-R, -R, and then you would add ado or ido. That's why I have that up here, by the way. And so you would add ado for AR verbs and ido for ER and IR verbs. So let's let's have a look at uh, what that looks like right up here. And so, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of different examples. And what I wanna do with those is walk through and show you how to make past participles out of these infinitives. And keep in mind an infinitive is an unconjugated verb. So that's all this is right here. And, uh, and so we have comer, vivir, trabajar, buscar, leer, creer, jugar, entender, asistir, beber, tomar, right? And so a lot of times you see asistir paired with the, with the, uh, with a, right? The letter here, uh, a, and that means to attend. So like to attend an event, right? To attend a party, to attend class, right? And so anyways, that's uh, for, uh, I guess neither here nor there at this point, but uh, just put a, thought I'd throw that out there. And so, uh, but let's look at how to make these into past participles. And so we have comer, right, which means to eat. And we would drop the ER, right? That's what rule number one says, drop the AR, ER, IR. In that case, there's an ER. And then it's an ER verb, comer, so we would add either. Right, and so that's where we get comido. That means eaten, right? And so while we have here to eat, well, eaten at this point, to live, to work, to look for, to read, to believe, to play, to understand, to attend, 
and then to drink, both of these are synonyms, um, we're gonna convert those into these past participles. And so comido was our first example. BB, and we drop the IR, and then it's an IR verb, so we'd add ido. So you get vivido, which is lived, right? So I have lived in Miami for 10 years, for example. And so lived is your past participle there. And then I have is your, this part of it, right? Your, your sort of helping verb, if you will. Uh, trabajar, we drop the AR, we add ado. So now we have trabajar, so that's worked. And so we have worked all week for example. And again, I know I'm using those in English, but I'm gonna get over here to, to uh, these sentences and we're gonna translate them into Spanish so you see how this works. Um, and then you have buscar, which means to look for, drop the AR, and we add ado. So buscado. So hemos buscado a nuestro perro por cinco horas. We have looked for our dog for five hours, right? Leer, ER verb, we drop the ER, and then we add ido. Now this I is gonna take an accent, and that just has, has to do with the phonetics of, of these letters here. It doesn't make it irregular. It just means that it takes a little accent there, and crea is gonna do the same thing. I, do, I put those here intentionally side by side, or uh, one above another, uh, to show you that both of those do that. And so they take a little bit of an accent just to, just to add some, uh, a bit of a, sound right here and that has to do with the phonetics of like I said these two letters whoops these two letters and so but again that doesn't make it irregular it just uh, has to adjust slightly for the sound and so jugar drop the ar it becomes jugar right and you guessed it because you guys are probably saying these in your head at this point entender you got it entendido right understood we have understood the lesson, or you all have understood the lesson. Ustedes han entendido la lección. Of course, you'll probably hear someone say, Ustedes entendieron la lección, which is you all understood the lesson. It's just another way of saying it and using the preterite. But in the case of um, the present perfect indicative, to say you all have understood the lesson is effectively, ustedes han entendido la lección. And so, uh, asistir, you guessed it, asistido, and then you'd say asistido a, we have attended the party, hemos asistido a la fiesta, right? Of course, if you want to use the preterite, you could say asistimos a la fiesta, we attended the party. But again, these are just varying ways to use Spanish. Uh, beber, ER verb, yep, you got it, bebido, that dot was already there, that was convenient. And then tomar becomes tomado, right? We drop that AR and then we add ado. So that's how we form past participles. And again, no matter if it's a whole group of females or one single male, when we use the past participle in a perfect tense, right? When we use a past participle in a perfect tense, it doesn't change this letter here. It always stays the letter O, right? And so, again, there are ways of using a past participle with the verb estar, which you would then, of course, make agreement in number and gender, but that's not what we're talking about today. And so, when you use a past participle in a perfect tense, you always end that past participle the ones you're looking at right here, for example, with the letter O. So, okay, good. I am going to change up markers. And we're gonna go with plum or mauve. I don't know what color it looks like for you all, but it's kind of plum-like. And so we're gonna use that for um, this final section here. And so, as you can see, I have um, a number of sentences in English that I'm gonna translate with you all. And um, if you can see here, uh, you have, I have drunk the coffee. And by the way, drunk is the past participle in English. Uh, if you don't believe me, look it up. And so um, I have, you have already read the book. We'll put a period there for fun. We have already eaten lunch. They have lived in Miami for five years. And then she has played soccer three times this week. And so if you want, 
hit pause and try to do these on your own and then uh, unpause, right? And uh, you'll be able to see how well you did. And so I'm gonna go ahead and write these translations here and uh, bring this lesson to a close. And so I have drunk the coffee, right? And so again, like I said, I don't have to say Joe, right? I can just use this. So I can say a bebido. Of course, I can say tomado too if I want, but I'm just gonna write bebido. A bebido el café. I can say yo he bebido el café if I want. There's nothing wrong with that. But this speaks for itself. I know it's I because of the use of a, right? You, let's look at two, right? So we're, we're working with that one. You have already read the book. So now we have something on there um, that this is kind of sitting in the middle of these two, the word already. And so uh, that word in Spanish is ya, right? Ya, and it can be placed at the beginning or the end. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you have already read the book. And so we want to do two. You don't need the subject pronoun two because us already speaks for that. And so you would say us. You know what we're going to do? We're going to make this a question just for fun, right? And so have you already read the book is what we're about to try to say. And I know some of you already tried to do these translations and now you're like, come on, man, you're, you're changing it up on me. But just, just bear with me. And so um, we're gonna make it a question. Have you already read the book, right? And so you can say, um, let's put an upside down question mark here. So, has leído el libro ya? So you can do it that way, right? I'm gonna use this green marker and write it the other way. And so, um, has leído el libro ya? Have you already read the book? And then. Like I said, you can put this here, or you can put it in the beginning before us. So let's see what that looks like. So you can say, ya has leído, accent, el libro. Ya has leído el libro, like you're shocked that this person has already read the book, right? And so um, just for fun, let's answer that. And so we could say, yeah, I already read the book. We're gonna use the black marker. And so uh, I'm gonna come over here. And so we can say, si, sí. ya he leído el libro, right? Si, sí. ya he leído el libro, right? And so that's how you would respond to that. Number three, we have already eaten lunch. Let's go back to plum. We have already eaten lunch. And so again, we have this word already in here, but you already know how how to translate that. And so uh, we have already eaten lunch. So uh, you have, you can say comer almuerzo, like literally to eat and then the noun lunch. But I'm gonna use the actual verb almorza because that in and of itself is the verb to eat lunch. So that's what I'm gonna use mainly because of space. So we have already eaten lunch. So we'll say ya hemos almorzado. Right, let's make that look more like an R. Ya hemos almorzado. Now, again, as I said, you can say ya hemos almorzado, or you can put ya on this back end. You can say hemos almorzado ya, right? And so uh, that's implying you've, uh, you have already eaten lunch, or in this case, we have already eaten lunch. Number four, they have lived, and notice we have have lived, uh, I know I've underlined these here already, have eaten, have read, have drunk, and then she has played. And so here's your grammar right here that we've been working on. Helping verb, helping verb, or in, in the case of Spanish, haber as the helping verb, or have in English, right? And then our past participle. So these are our past participles in English as well. Notice that they're not all um, regular, if you will. And so um, if you're thinking, wow, this is kind of challenging, you know, but know that for somebody learning English, it's also challenging because of how past participles shift and change in English as well. So anyways, um, number four, we have, they have lived in Miami for five years. And so let's, uh, we'll see what most of you use for four, right? Because this is a unit of measuring time. So we'll see, let's see what, uh, what you came up with. So they have lived in Miami for five years. So 
uh, that would be Aios. You don't need Aios. You could use it, but you don't have to if it's clear. Anytime there's any ambiguity, of course, we want to use the subject pronoun. But um, we'll, we'll go ahead and throw Aios on there just for fun. Aios on, right? H-A-N, right? That's what we're working with. On Bibido in Miami or Miami, if you want. Ellos han vivido en Miami por cinco años, right? And so por, I use por if some of you are like, well, why do you use por, not para? Por is used for a unit of measuring time. And so that's why we would say por cinco años, por dos años, por diez años, whatever that unit of measuring time is. And then lastly, we have number five. She has played soccer three times this week. Guess we need to finish spelling that word. And so she has played soccer three times this week. So let's have a look at this. So she has played, so we don't need ella because it's already understood, at least here. So we're gonna use just, we're just gonna go with a, right? And so a jugado al football. Let's get that accent there. Tres veces esta semana, right? Ella ha jugado al fútbol tres veces esta semana. Now, have a look at this. I'm gonna use the black marker, right? Because uh, it might be a little hard to read there. And so um, we have semana. Hopefully that is, is helpful, right? And so I'm gonna spell this here as well, why? Basis. I didn't say tres tiempos, I said tres basis. So that's the word we would use for three times, right? In, in terms of doing something on multiple occasions. So that's what that's why we have basis there, V-E-C-E-S. And so if you were wondering what that was. But um, so yeah, so this is um, really the introduction into perfect tenses. And of course we started with present perfect indicative. Um, Again, just as a bit of a quick review to, to conclude, haber is the helping verb for all perfect tenses. Um, and then you pair it with a past participle, which like I said, we nicknamed alo and ido, right? And so if it's an AR, we make an alo. If it's an ER and IR, we do ido. And we pair those two together, um, haber with the past participle to make all perfect tenses. In the case of the present perfect indicative, we conjugate haber, our helping or auxiliary verb, in the present tense, the present indicative to be specific. And so, again, as you can see here, we have, uh, this is using it sort of in, in action, if you will. So we've got he bebido, has leído, hemos almorzado. And remember I said, even if it's plural, that stays the letter O. This is a case in point right here. So hemos almorzado. I keep that as just just to know. And then ellos han vivido, han vivido, and then ha jugado. So here we have our use of haber, right? And then here we have our past participle, right? Our alos and our ilos. And so hopefully that was helpful for you guys in trying to uh, understand and even conceptualize uh, not just the present perfect indicative, but all perfect tenses. And so uh, we will build from Ave in the past participle as we move forward with other perfect tenses. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And um, yeah, this is the present perfect indicative.